Welcome back. Today I want to try something a little different. I was thinking of putting on a tutorial about 3D printing. And in uh, preparing this, I made this little Word document kind of like a script where I wanted to diagram out what I want to talk about, what I want to show. And I, while I was starting to uh, make this video, I had like the text down over here on the left hand side so that I could read it. But then I thought, well, why don't I just leave the the tutorial part of the text right on the screen so that anytime you want to, you can just kind of pause and and read it if you wanted to. And so what we're going to plan today is, if you've been following what I've been doing, I've got this this 3D model of a uh, of a small block Chevy engine, and uh, up here in the upper left corner here, here's the picture of the of the transmission and the frame rails. And we need to make a cross member that goes across those uh, frame and holds up the transmission. So I just kind of quickly made this crude drawing with the pencil on a piece of paper, showing kind of the general shape that the thing should be and some of the some of the dimensions that I think we need to match. And then we're going to take that information and we're going to put it into Tinkercad, which you've, if you've watched, you've seen I've done used that a few times. We're going to create the, the part in Tinkercad. We're going to export it out to a G-code file, which we can then plug into our 3D printer. And then when the 3D printer it prints it out, we should have the finished product. So with that being said, um, follow along. When I first started looking at uh, doing 3D printing, I found that a lot of people were using a program called Tinkercad. And it's a kind of a simplified CAD program uh, bought out by Autodesk, which makes, makes a very popular program called Auto, AutoCAD. It's completely free. It's web-based. You don't have to install anything on your, pro on your computer. You go to Tinkercad.com, and I, guess, I think you got to register, put your name in. But I'm just going to show you some basic uh, blocks. I'm going to do a create, create 3D design. And this is how it starts out. You've got a blank work plane. That's what that big blue grid is. And we've got some basic shapes over on the side. And the basic building blocks, here's a red solid block. And we'll bring in a transparent block. And this is kind of the basic of all... CAD work, I guess, or design work using uh, Tinkercad, uh, using this program. And this, uh, I'm going to resize this, make it a little bigger, just, just for fun. You can kind of stretch the corners like this. And if I intersect the transparent block onto the solid block, this is the basic way of cutting and shaping. And then I combine these into a single entity. I'll select them both. Do the group or combined effort. Bing. So that's how you cut out that piece with that solid piece. Let's bring in another one. Here is a cylinder. And this cylinder is transparent also. And I'm going to resize this a little bit, make it a little smaller. Make it a little bit taller. And I can put it into here. If I want to drill a hole through this block, you would just get this cylinder placed in the right spot you want. So I wanted to center it along this way. I click them both. I can use click align. And I want to center it. Now there it is. It's centered along this plane or along this, this edge right here. Now we'll combine these together. There you have. Now you have a hole through this block. And this is kind of the basics of all the CAD work that we do in Tinkercad. Um, oh, funny thing, I'll just point out real quick. When you first create something, 
Tinkercad assigns some unusual name. This is called Spectacular Robo Usum. And then you can just click on that and say, call it whatever you want. I'll go Tutorial 1 is the name. I'll exit back out. It'll save it. And there it is. You can see all the other things that I've been working on and all the different things, but now there it is. There's tutorial one. So here's the whole model, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right here in the back, we need to build a cross member that sits on top of these frame rails and holds up the back of this transmission. So what I like to do, as usual, is I like to turn off all the things that we don't have, don't need of. And this is something I pre-made. This is a, a, a round cylinder which represents that section of the, uh, of the transmission. So to get started with, uh, we need to build, start building part of the cross members. So over here on basic shapes, we'll bring in just a basic solid box. And uh, from our specs, we know that this box needs to be... Um, Let's see, it's five millimeters wide, and it needs to be about 4.5 millimeters high. So that's going to become the new cross section piece here uh, underneath there. And so, the next thing we want to do is look at how it's going to fit um, under the transmission. And and, I, and this is, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this here a little bit. It's the height, see, so you want the, the transmission to kind of be cradled in there, not too much. So let's just say about right there. Okay, that's, a, that's about where that cross member is going to look. I'm going to center everything later, but this is, this is good for how it should be. And we'll duplicate that and bring another piece over here to the side. And this piece here is going to be the flange that sits on top of the frame. And that we want to be, uh, let's say, two millimeters high and about maybe three millimeters long. So this little piece right here we're going to set on top of the frame. And to put it on top of the frame, we set the work place to the top surface, click on the object, hit D, which brings it up there, and then it's going to be over there on top here somewhere. And then we can do a perfectly align by selecting both of those objects. And we want to align it with the edge over in there. So select them both. I use the align function. So we want to align with this frame member to on this edge. There it is. Actually, that was a mistake. Do that again. Align. We're going to align with this edge. So this is the top edge of that flange right there. Now we'll take our other cross member. We'll duplicate it again. Bring it over here. And this will be the piece that angles up from the bottom up to that top piece. So we can use this rotation function. There it is. Look at it from this view here. And we'll just kind of like move it over, drag it up about the height we want it to be. And something like that. Looking at it from that view right there. That's a, a little bit lower right there. Because right here, I don't want it to be part of catching this cradle. I just want it to be part of uh, that piece right there. And that's looking pretty good, I would say. Maybe a little bit higher. Right, right there. Now... Oh, just for fun, I'm going to do an alignment. Right now, these things are all kind of mishmashed different places. Let me uh, 
say we're going to try it with those pieces, that one, that one. Let's do an align around the cylinder and we'll center them. So now it's starting to look like pieces of a uh, of a cross member. And the next step is we need to be able to cut off this top flange that's sticking up here. So once again, we'll set the set the work plane to the top of that. We'll duplicate that block, bring it up to there, change it to transparent. So now it's kind of like it's going to be a cutting edge. And then I'll just kind of stretch it out big enough. And I always like to make these cutting edges just a little bit past the edges that you're cutting just to make sure it gets everything cut. So when we execute that, it will uh, it will cut off that top lens. Let's uh, cancel our work plane again. And I'll make that just a little bit bigger. Now I want to duplicate that block so we can cut out the bottom of this uh, rail where the, where the frame rail is. So let's hit duplicate. And then let's line the, the piece that we got with the frame rail. Select it, select the frame rail. Okay, so now we have another piece that needs to be cut off. And that is this protruding section underneath the cross member. This is a little bit more complex, but I think we can do it. Let's look at it from the underside. Set my work plane to that surface right there. I'll show you what I'm up to here. Take the block that we're going to copy, reproduce it or duplicate it. Now when I hit D, it should move it down to the top of it is even with that. Cancel my work plane. And I should be able to take this block and move it underneath where it's going to be cutting this piece. So if you look at it from different views, you can see what I'm talking about. So, it, okay, so there, looking like it will cut that, like that. I can always look at it from the left view, which forces it to look at it on straight. So now, now with all the, the cutting objects where they need to be for cutting, off this bottom protrusion for cutting off this little piece sticking up and for notching it out for the frame, we're ready to select all those items and combine them. So there's the bottom cutting block. There's the main cross member, top cutting block, this little red piece here, that this flange, and this uh, frame cutting block. So if we combine all those pieces now, it should make the piece we need group. There it is. And just to see that that's it, I can just grab it and pull it out. Yeah, that's what that piece looks like. Hit undo. We're back. Once we're happy with that side, we need to duplicate it for to the other side. So we'll click on it. Hit duplicate. Hit mirror. And then it's asking me whether I want to mirror in what direction, and I'll say horizontal. There it is right there, and that's the, what that piece looks like right there. We'll take the piece that we just made, select the frame rail, hit the align function, tell it we're going to align it with this frame rail, hit that button right there. So now the outside edge is aligned, and we can see now we're getting more and more parts of it. The other part now is this bottom part of the cross member. We need to get it so it's not sticking out. Now I need to make it short enough that it's not hanging out the bottom and long enough so that it, it intersects the top part of that. So maybe that edge looks good right there. Try this one. And be right there. 
And if we're happy with that, we can select all three of those pieces, do a group, and there looks like a cross member. Drag it out here to take a look at it. That looks like all one piece. Hit undo and we're back to there. With the cross member built, now we're ready to notch it out for the saddle for the uh, transmission. And here's the barrel representing that piece. In this case, we're going to turn it to transparent. That way it will become a cutting edge. And if we combine the cross member with the barrel, it should make a notch. There it is, right there. We have a cross member with a saddle for the transmission. Now we're ready to make some holes in it for the screws. And as previously determined, first of all, let's bring in a cylinder. And this time it's a transparent cylinder because it'll be used for cutting. We determined that, that the tolerance needed for the screw to go through is 2.5 millimeters. So let's make that 2.5 that direction, 2.5 that direction. So there is a something that if we stick it through there, it's going to drill a hole. Now for indenting this, the head of the screw into the bottom, let's copy that. And we decided that that needed to be 4.5 uh, millimeters in diameter. 4.5, 4.5. And so that cylinder there is suitable for the uh, screw head. So let's go ahead and shorten this just so that it'll become easier to um, work with in a second here. You'll see what I mean. So let's select all three of those objects. Let's hit the align tool. So we want to align with the cross member. We want it to be centered in that direction, but we also want it to be centered in that direction. So now you see all th three of those objects lined up. Now here's the tricky part. We need to the hole, the, the two and a half millimeter hole is fine for drilling the hole, but we want the cylinder that's going to drill up in for the screw head need to be at the right height. So the tricky part is let's turn this cross member to transparent temporarily. Look at the left view, it zooms it right in here, and that we can now select this cylinder here and we can make it longer or shorter. So here's missing it, here's cutting all the way through it. And we'll just kind of estimate this. In this case, I'm going to go like three, four, maybe about half a millimeter. Uh, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to weaken the cross member. But that looks like about where I'd want it to be. Let's turn the cross member back solid. And just in case I made a mistake, I'm going to select them all again and align them again before I drill the hole. We'll align them with the cross member. That's still gray. That's still gray. Looking good. So there is. We are ready to do the final combine. Pick them all. Do a group. And if we did it right, we ought to be able to see the hole through the middle with a little indent area for the screw head, the saddle for the transmission to sit on, and it sits on top of the frame just like we want to. So now to see, I'm going to go ahead and lock all these layers so I don't accidentally do something that I shouldn't. I'm going to turn all the layers back on. There it is. So now we have should have a transmission sitting on that cross member and the cross member up on the frame rails. And if we looked at it from the bottom, we should be able to see that the hole in the in the uh, cross member lines up with the hole in the bottom of the transmission where the screw is going to go up into it. So I would say that is a success. And if we're happy with that build, we can go ahead and change it to the color it's going to be. In this case, it'll be kind of gray. And there's our rear cross member under our rear of our transmission. Now, if we're happy with that new part, we can save it as a shape into our shape library. 
Well, the shapes that you see here on the right are the basic shapes that come with uh, uh, Tinkercad, but they give you the option to create your own shape library. So if I click on that, you can see some of the various things that I've created over, over time. And so I can select the one that I want. In this case, it's the, the uh, cross member. I can hit Create Shape. And there it is. We can look at it, kind of what it looks like here. We can give it a name. And I'm going to call this V9, which is actually version 9 of all these edits I've been making. V9 rear cross member. And I can hit Save Shape. And there it is. So in the future, if you ever want to use that shape for something else, you can go to your library. You can grab it off of the library and you can bring it in. And there it is. Use it for whatever you need to use it for. I'll go ahead and delete that. So now we need to prepare this new part to send to our 3D printer. I'm going to select the part. In this case, I'm going to duplicate it. Bring it out here. And when you're printing on a 3D printer, it prints them one slice at a time. And if I print it upright like this, it's going to sag when it tries to do these that are above the deck like this. So in this particular one, let's go ahead and rotate this object 90 degrees. And then we'll put it down on the deck. So now there's no parts that need to be bridged over. And that's what we'll be we'll send to the 3D printer. So let's go ahead and select it. We hit export. And it's going to create an, a .stl file, which is, you can look that up, creates it. There, there's a download right there. Let's open the file. And that automatically launches Creality Print program, which is associated with STL files. And this interface is similar to Tinkercad that you can navigate around and look at. So there it is sitting on what you would call the 3D printer bed, what it's going to look like. And now you need to hit the word slice. I hit slice. And this is kind of a simulation of what the 3D printer is going to look like. That purple thing is suggesting the head that's printing it. Uh, and, and it's in layers. When I say slice, it's actually when you, things print, it gets prints one slice at a time. And here's the, here's the different layers just for visual. So as if this thing was printing, it would... It would print one layer, then the next, then the next, then the next, and it would just keep building it up from the top bottom until it got to the top. And that's what it would look like. And if you're happy with the way that looks, you can hit export to local. So at this point, we brought in an STL file, but now we, we need to export a G code file, which is what the 3D printer understands. So export to local. And I'm going to call it the same thing we did before, V9 rear cross member. And say save. Now it wants to know if I should open the local folder and look at it. I click on it. There is all the previous G-code files that I've created. You can see version 5, version 6, version 8. So this particular one, v9 rear cross member dot G-code. That is in there now. Now we can go ahead and close Creality Print Program. Save before exit. We don't need to do that because we can always redo it again if we have to. Let's go back to our Tinkercad program. Delete this temporary one we made there. I like to make sure everything is locked before exiting. There's our, our full model. And we'll exit out of the editor for Tinkercad. For this next part, I'm going to do it one-handed because I have the camera in my hand. And on the side of the 3D printer, there's an SD card slot. It's right there. And I'm going to take it. And I've got this adapter for a USB plug right there and I'm going to plug this into the side of my laptop and it should read it
and then I've got my my laptop so it automatically launches the uh, the Explorer window when the USB card is pulled in and there is the USB card with the G code files on it and right here you can see the directory that we opened previously that has the newest one that we just made so I'm going to take V9 rear cross member G code from the laptop drag it over and drop it into the USB card port. There it is. And I'm going to eject the USB device. It says safe to remove hardware. Get the little blue lights off. I can pull that out of the USB port. Remove the card. Make sure it's face up. And I learned this the hard way is if you plug this SD card into the printer upside down while the power's on, it erases the card. I found that out. Put that in. There we go. Go to my box of filament. Pick out the, the gray one, which I think will match the other ones we've been using. I always buy from Hatchbox. Somebody recommended that was a good quality. There's the this new spool. Whenever you put away a roll of filament, you usually uh, end up poking it through this little keeper here on each side to kind of keep it from unspooling. And also, from the last time you used it, when you pulled it out of the printer, it usually is all melted on the end where it came out. So they recommend that you trim the end at 45 degrees with this tool, which came with the printer. With the roll hanging up on the holder, I can get it started down here into the print head, push down this little clamp, push it all the way down to the bottom. Then with everything loaded, I'm ready to turn on the power switch. Here it comes up. Hit the print menu, and we should be able to see, there it is, the rear cross member, V9 rear cross member is right there. Hit print, hit confirm, and it'll start warming up the beds, the heads I should say. And before it starts printing, it just verifies the the depth or the uh, the height of the bed in a couple different spots. And after the calibration is done, we are starting to print our cross member. Looks like it's been about nine minutes and it looks like that is just finishing printing. And hopefully that is what we just designed. And one of my favorite parts is to take it off the bed here. There we go. And if we did it right, that should be what we intended. So there's the finished product. You can kind of kind of see the cradle here where the transmission sits. You can kind of see the hole where the screw is going to go in with a little inset area for the screw head. See the flanges that sit on the frame. So let's see if we can fit it in to our model. Here's the model without the rear cross member. And as previously worked on, there's the the previously made hole for the for the uh, rear of the transmission with the screw in it. Should be able to start that screw in the bottom. It's going to kind of look like when it's in that hole. 
with the screw started, I can kind of put it in there. There's the cross member on the cradle. See if it fits in our frame. So there's the finished product. We got the cross member that we just built or designed and printed. Put it in there. Now it's joined in to the rest of the model. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. Just to summarize a little bit what we did today. We uh, had a need uh, to build a cross member for this transmission. We made kind of a drawing, a uh, real crude and and the penciled one here to kind of what we wanted to do. We went into the uh, Tinkercad program and uh, and built it. We sent it to our 3D printer. And then we had the finished product which we put into our model. It's really been fun for me. Uh, it's amazing what these 3D printers can do uh, and it's been so fun. Once again, I appreciate you guys, and thanks for watching.